part of the orchestrated plan, we allege that 16 Michigan residents met covertly in the basement of Michigan GOP headquarters and knowingly and of their own volition, signed their names to multiple certificates stating that they were the duly elected and qualified electors for president and vice president of the United States of America for the state of Michigan. They weren't the duly elected and qualified electors and each of the defendants knew it. They carried out these actions with the hope and belief that the electoral votes of Michigan's 2020 election would be awarded to the candidate of their choosing instead of the candidate that Michigan voters actually chose. Weird, that seems so familiar to me for some reason. Almost like another party already did this and now they're trying to apply different standards to their political opponents. Is it just me or is the government increasingly rounding up the political opponents of the Democrat party? And all of this is happening after years worth of Democrat left-wing riots where most of the charges were dropped against these rioters. And those events were left to fall down the memory hole and never be spoken of again probably because the Democrats and the media incited many of those riots by spreading misinformation. They're even suppressing songs about it, with country music television banning Jason Aldean's latest video that focuses on leftist riots. But now, after Joe Biden takes control, his biggest opponent has been indicted for so-called crimes that Biden himself is guilty of just before an election. Trump supporters are getting ridiculous sentences and are rotting in prisons for trespassing and using bullhorns. Yet in our two-tiered system, Hillary Clinton gets help from corrupt FBI agent Peter Strzok, who changes the language of her charges in order to remove the crime and let her off the hook. But elderly Republicans who almost provided alternative electors in the 2020 election are now charged with felonies. Like I mentioned earlier, that's weird because I could have sworn that Democrats did the exact same thing after Trump won in 2016. Oh, that was different. It all started with a Washington Post article by Lawrence Lessig that's titled, The Constitution Let's the Electoral College choose the winner. They should choose Clinton. Oh well, just screw elections, I guess, because it's totally different when Democrats insurrect. And we know this because state media talking heads immediately started promoting the idea of electors changing their votes for Hillary Clinton. Chris Hayes of MSNBC said, fun fact, states decide how to apportion their electors. They could give them all to, say, whichever candidate won majority of counties. George Takai, known for being in Star Trek and saying, oh my, said, if there was interference on the play, you don't count the touchdown. Russia meddled in our elections, says the CIA. Electors, do your jobs. Yeah, you see what I mean? They justify their authoritarian actions with things that turn out to be completely overblown or just an outright hoax. They were even pushing this scheme to overturn the election and crown Hillary Clinton Queen of America on MSNBC with the cannibal from Sin City. I think there are people who are pushing very hard who think that um, because of some of the constitutional perils of the Emoluments Clause, uh, because of the popular vote margin, because of um, a fundamental, they think, threat to liberal democracy, that, 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 that electors should be persuaded and pressured on Monday to, to part with what their pledge is and vote, and vote against Donald Trump. Yes, they absolutely you should do so? that. Absolutely. I, I believe right now that there are electors. They only need 38 of them who have a conscience or who are worried about a man who won't attend the daily security briefings, who, uh, who we now know Russia was trying to help get elected. Michael Moore and the author of the Washington Post article went as far as to pledge money and legal services to help these electors with their legal troubles afterwards. Oh, that was different. But if you think this is a two-tiered system that's been weaponized against Republicans and conservatives, then you're probably a white supremacist and the government will be by to round you up soon with all of the Democrat Party media outlets promoting this coup attempt. On the Daily Beast, quote, it's not too late for electors to change history. On Slate, quote, will enough electors go rogue to stop Trump? On Vox, they said, quote, let conscientious electors do their jobs. Time Magazine said, quote, electors against Trump are faithful, not faithless. The Hollywood class also stepped up to encourage electors to overturn the election in this classic video. 538 members of the Electoral College you and just 36 other conscientious Republican electors can make a difference by voting your conscience on December 19th and thereby shaping the future of our nation. 
I'm not asking you to vote for Hillary Clinton. Any eligible person, no matter which party they belong to. Oh, that was different. If you watch this channel, then you know this isn't even the first time Democrats have attempted to decertify electoral votes. They did it in 2000 and again in 2005. Oh, that was different. You see, it's always going to be different when Democrats and left-wingers do it, no matter what it is, because they are justified. They will always come up with a rationalization for any action. That's why their trouble is always good trouble. If you haven't realized the very real danger emerging here, it's probably a good time to wake up. Thanks to Kanekoa the Great for his research and compiling this information in his Twitter thread on this subject, which you should definitely go check out. That's all I have for that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button, share and subscribe, and make sure to leave a comment to vent some of those frustrations. Thanks a lot. I'll see you all in the next one.